Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning how to create your own chatbot that is powered by AI that searches and finds answers from documents you provide to answer user questions, stay tuned. I'm covering the basics on how to do this using ChatGPT and Replit.com, though you will be able to use other services or other AI bots if you're interested. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. First thing you're going to do is go ahead and pull up ChatGPT. So you'll go to OpenAI.com and then you'll also go to Replit.com. Now, prior to doing this, one helpful thing, if you could hit that like button and that subscribe button just to show support for the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, jumping in, you can use other bots if you're interested, so you don't have to use ChatGPT. You can use other AI platforms. I'm just going to walk you through this script to actually work out this project. We will be doing this from the perspective of a beginner with absolutely no coding knowledge. So I will use some terminology here and there. If you don't understand it, I will be walking through how to implement this start to finish. So pull up your AI model or service of choice, then head over to replit.com or pull up your IDE or integrated development environment of choice. I am going to be referencing this document in a little bit just as a helpful way to overcome any potential issues. You will need the API key for your AI platform, in this case, ChatGPT. And another thing to note is Replit.com is they do have a free version, which we will be using for ChatGPT. The current version that's free is 3.5, but the API in order to use it, you do need to have a billable account. So to avoid any major issues, I recommend setting up your usage limits. So now that we have all of these pages set up, let's go ahead and jump straight into actually building this out. So first things first, we are going to go to ChatGPT and we're gonna say something along the lines of, you will take the role of A, and we'll do this in Python. So we're gonna say Python, or we'll say professional, Say Python development expert and replit.com expert. <clears throat> now, I'm using this in Replit because you can use it online. So instead of downloading something like Visual Studio Code and going through all the complicated processes, you can just run it from your browser. So what we're going to start off with is we need to be as specific as possible. I've noticed when using ChatGPT, when you start asking for revisions, it can get a little bit trickier dealing with some of those issues. So for example, if you start out and you aren't specific enough and you continually refine your requirements, you could end up um, really running into a ton of issues. So the idea is you'll start out with your use case and then later on you could end up finding out, okay, I've asked ChatGPT to revise this 20 times. Now we have a completely different product. So uh, let's go ahead and try to jump through the actual process and see if we can do this in as few attempts as possible. So we're gonna say, write me code for a chatbot that answers users questions based on, let's see, information provided from documents in a folder called documents. This will pull information from multiple .txt files in the folder and will not answer based on information on the internet. The idea here is we want to make sure that we are answering based on information in these documents only. We don't want ChatGPT to find something online or from past help articles that confuses users. We also are specifying the folder because if we don't specify the name, ChatGPT could potentially assume the name and it's harder to debug if you're newer to Python. So you'll see that we also need to say this chatbot needs to use GPT 3.5 to analyze the documents and provide the best answer to the user's question. So we're specifying a couple of things here. First, we need to use text documents. Second, we need to use ChatGPT 3.5, so we will need our API key. You can use whichever version of ChatGPT, or you can replace this with 
really whatever AI platform you're using to analyze the information. And then we're specifying pull from these documents only. So we'll go ahead and run this and see what happens. So <clears throat> you'll see we have these answers here. So we have import OS and import OpenAI. Now, anytime you see something like import, one thing to note here is you may need to install something in Replit. So let's go get Replit set up really quickly. You can click Create REPL, click Python, and we'll call this Super Awesome Chatbot. Now it's going to open a file here, which will be your main.py. So first thing we're going to do is just click New Folder and call it Documents, because that's where we're going to store our text files. Now I'll show you what these text files are here. I have New 1 and New 2 on my desktop. These are just copied and pasted pages from codelessfix.com. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to add something in text document one saying the key is 1234. And then we will click save. And then in new two, we'll say, let's see, the awesome is, we'll just go with four, five, six, seven. And then we will save that. Now we'll take these two documents and we will drop them in the documents folder. The idea here is these are just pages from codelessfix.com I copied and pasted. So these would basically be your help files or your help site. So you could imagine if you have your help site, you could copy and paste those pages into these text documents or try to work out how to scan them online as well. But the idea here is we're just checking these documents for content and we're using multiple because we want to make sure we're not only searching one. So I need to find an answer in both documents to prove that this is working. Now we're going to go back to our script here and we're going to click copy code and we'll paste it in here. Now in the event that you get any errors related to something that says import, <clears throat> for example saying it's not available, you can go over to shell and you can type in pip install and then the name of whatever's causing the issue. So for example, if it doesn't recognize OpenAI, you could type that out here. And the idea is what that's going to be doing is it's going to install that package. You can also scroll over here and check for packages as well. I've had my antivirus program Avast ding a couple times from trying to search for certain packages. So I prefer to do it this way instead. All right, so we'll go ahead and try to run it and see if we get any errors. The first time you run it in Replit, it will set up the environment. So don't get nervous if you see the CPU spiking or RAM. We're using a free account and it will need to do this setup, but it's usually a one-time thing per REPL. So since we're getting this set up here, you won't need to worry about having to do this a second time around. It just needs to do this initial install. Kind of like if you were trying to install something from the internet and you need to run it the first time before you can actually run the program. Now, another thing to note here is if you want to deploy this online, I'll create a separate video on deploying Python packages online, but you do have the option to deploy from Replit. The reason I'm mentioning this now is the work that you do here may need to be done in whatever platform you're using to deploy this online. So we will allow this to run. It usually doesn't take very long. You'll see, for example, it says installing OpenAI, which is what we would have done in the shell screen. Now, once it kind of resets, you'll see it says, hello, I'm the chat bot. So we're going to say, what is the key? And you'll see we get a large number of errors, which is kind of expected. So <clears throat> you'll see it saying incorrect API key. That's a pretty simple one to fix. So as we're scrolling through, you're basically looking for your API key. So we'll go to the API keys page and click create new. Now, before we're actually getting this set up and running, I want to make sure to preface this video by saying, make sure you're following any and all applicable laws, rules, regulations, guidelines, etc. when doing anything in this video. So when you're getting an actual chatbot running, and part of the reason I'm saying this now is before you get it up and running, make sure that you're not only following proper usage for OpenAI, but for any of the data and information and processes that you're following. So. Let's go ahead and create our new key. Now you're going to want to make note of a couple of things here. 
I'm using ChatGPT 3.5, which at the time of filming is free, but having the API keys does have a cost with it. So in this case, you'll see we have the usage limits page. I have set limits here just to make sure that I don't incur any massive costs. And then, so you will have a billable account. Now the Replit account is free and the chat GPT page is free, but this will require a billable account. So you can check out the chat GPT cost page or pricing page to understand what those costs are going to look like. And you are going to want to avoid giving out this API key to people because that means they could then use it. So we're gonna paste this key here, which I will then delete after the video, and then we'll click run again. Now at this point, we should not have any errors yet because we haven't actually done anything that's going to impact the code. So we're gonna say, what is the key? And then this time, you'll see it says the key is one, two, three, four. So, so far, so good. Now, I've already unfortunately forgotten what we said in the second one, so let's go ahead and open that really quickly. So we're going to say the awesome. So we'll say, what is the awesome? And it says the awesome is four, five, six, seven. So, so far everything is working really much better than I was expecting. Now we can try to ask about Let's see something that's specific to this document so let's go to new one you'll see uh we'll say something like where can the users be managed users can be managed in firebase and you can see that is right here so it's able to pull information from both documents which is working very very well and then you'll see um so we're going to say where can I view user pages? And you can view user pages by building static sharing sites. So it, it is effectively pulling the information from these pages. And then I'll ask one final question. How do I make a login page? And you'll see HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You'll need to create HTML form. <clears throat> And then we'll want to make sure that it's not pulling anything from anywhere else. So you'll need them. So it, it is pulling some information online, um, I think. So we'll just double check. And we may want to have a, a user interface built. But for the most part right here, we'll see if this appears because it is going to be providing some kind of a summary. So it is possible ChatGPT is basically just summarizing this information. So everything is working very, very well. So the last thing we're gonna do somewhat is kind of like a bonus. I will copy this code and I will be putting it on the Codeless Fix page where I will also have the, uh, basically just the actual source code library. So if you're interested, to get to that page, you can go to codelessfix.com. So we'll go ahead, I'll cut this. We will open a new tab and we'll paste that in and hit enter. Now, once you're at codelessfix.com, all right, now if you are interested in getting this code yourself, we can head on over to codelessfix.com and you'll see that we have a coded apps section. So when you go to Python, you'll see there are different videos here and there's a source code library. When you click this, you have the ability to find the source code for different projects that I've built using ChatGPT. Now, the main reason I'm providing the code and not a file is I know that a lot of people may be concerned about downloading files online. So this way you can view the code, copy it to your clipboard, and then paste it wherever. So I'll put this in the source code library, which you can access from codelessfix.com. And that'll be the source code for this particular project, or we could try to add in something with a UI really quickly. All right, so now that we have a functional chat bot, what we're gonna do is try to build one with a user interface. So I wanna walk through what I did very, very quickly here because it, um, it, it was a little bit more time consuming and just to kind of give you an idea. I basically said, write this code to provide an appealing graphical user interface that will work in replit.com and provide the same answers. And then I pasted in this code here. 
Now you'll see I'll scroll past all of this. This is where I was saying, okay, it gave this error, it did this, it did this, and just kind of continued to refine this a bit more. As you can see, it took a bit, so I'll make sure to provide the code for this one as well. But at the end of it, I got this code here, and I just did what we've been doing. Now, one thing I wanna note, if you're using different libraries, for example, we're using a different library here or a different module or whatever you wanna call it. This is going to be for this one with the user interface. So what I did was when you go to create REPL, you'll notice if we start to type in that module or library, there's an option for it. So now if we just go with the default name, we can actually take everything that ChatGPT just gave us and paste it over top of the sample REPLet or REPL. And when we click run, you'll see it'll do its initial steps, uh, basically just saying, okay, we're doing this install or this setup. So you'll wait for that to finish. And then once it's done, it will open up a interface similar to what we had previously. So I'll provide this again in that source code library at codelessfix.com. So you can check that out, but we'll just wait for this to run and open up and install and everything. And then we'll test it just a bit. Now, bearing in mind, when you open up this new replit and everything else, you will need to set up a new folder and a new file. Now, I'm not going to wait for this to install because I already have it over here. It's the exact same code, and I just added in the document folder and the documents. So this is what I was just saying. You need to make sure you do this again because you have a new REPL. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click Stop, and then we're going to click Run. Now, I understand this is not the most visually appealing, but again, you can revise it by working with ChatGPT. So I'm just going to say, what is the key? And we'll click Send. And you'll see we get a pop-up saying the key is one, two, three, four, which is correct. Now, interestingly, I noticed if I say what is the, or if I just say what is awesome, I noticed that I'm not getting the same response as I was before, but it is still giving me information from those files. So you can rework that with chat GPT if you need to. For the most part, we are still just getting that information from those files. So we could try to type in what is the awesome and click send and you'll see it says it's four five seven six so it may be because i had that text document open so um you'll have these little documents in these windows so it's now searching both documents separately again document one is one two three four document two is four five six seven and then you can ask anything like what is this video because you see that text right here. Again, these are not the best for help articles, but you can click that and click send and you'll see, you'll get your answer from that document. So as you can see, we have a completely functional chatbot that is now searching these documents and allowing us to provide answers to users. So that's really all that there is to it. You can go through the process if you wanna click deployment or deploy here. You can see VNC deployments are not currently supported. So you'll have to figure out based on what you have if you can uh, deploy, and if so, you can kind of walk through that process. If you're interested, you can check out the link I'll put in the, basically just in the description of the video to walk through the deployment process using another platform. But I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.